Rico da Bolsa, Rimani Cari Braco Sicaia Bolsa, Rimanoza de Carebra Cari Bassete, Rimbeke de Bolsani Cados, Rimanoza da Carebra Cari Adosa. Father, we give you praise tonight. Thank you because we know you're here already. Father, we exalt you. That we magnify your name. Only you are faithful. Only you are holy. Only you are righteous. Only you are wonderful. We give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise God from home. All blessings flow. You are God all by yourself. 
Yes, you don't rest. We worship your majesty. Show your hands, say, Oh, 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 oh,
Good evening to everyone. You are welcome to our Bible study this evening. God bless you. I hope you all had a rewarding day. God is uh, coming to crown the day, even with more blessing tonight, as we learn at his feet. So I welcome all of you to the Bible study. Okay, no response. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead because of our time. Uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come and land at your feet. We thank you for how you have been wonderfully blessing us, loading us with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding that we require for these perilous times. Thank you for all you have been doing for us, preparing us even for your coming. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your children that have already joined. We pray that those that are still on the way trying to connect very soon, they will join us even in tonight's study. And we pray that none of us shall miss our blessing. None of us shall miss our reward. More importantly, Lord, we pray that you will help us as we live our life, expecting your return. And that when you return, Lord, to take the saints from the heart, and we are still here. We pray that none of us shall be left behind in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that even if we go before your return, ultimately, we shall all reign with you in your eternal kingdom. Thank you for our prayers. Blessed be your name. Holy Spirit, we hand over everything to your hand tonight. We ask that you take absolute control. Have your way. You do the teaching and make us to be the learners. At the end of everything, we promise to return back the glory to you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to welcome every one of us to the Bible study. Uh, tonight, we are taking on uh, Digging Deep number 255, uh, which is part 18 of the book of Revelation that we have been studying for some weeks now. Uh, by way of introduction in our outline, uh, last week uh, in our study, we saw the perfect joy of those in heaven. We saw the perfect joy they were having uh, for one reason, to have discovered that at last they made it, they made it to God's kingdom. They were so filled with joy because there, there was neither hunger, there was no thirst, because the Lamb, who is Jesus, constantly feeds them and refreshes them from the living fountain of waters. And every tear in their eyes had been wiped away. It was an indescribable joy they were having. It's my prayer that we also make it there on the last day. I will be part of those who will be singing songs of joy in God's kingdom. This night, our attention is shifted back to what will be happening to those who are left behind after rapture. And I must pre-warn us, <laughs> what you are going to hear tonight is very, very frightening indeed. Very, very, very frightening. I pray God will help us to uh, uh, have good understanding of this and be able to do all the things we need to do. We have three sub-topics for our uh, teaching tonight. The first part, uh, says the judgment of the trumpets, the judgment of the trumpets. That's the part one of our study tonight. And I read straight from uh, our outline. It says, when a man hands over a case to God for judgment, his enemies are in big trouble. In other words, if it is God that is judging a man, who can rescue that man from the hand of God? <laughs> Nobody. 
that exactly will be the situation or the case of anybody that misses rapture. Because the punishment will come. That's why God revealed it to his apostle. Write it down. Go and share with the people. So, during the great tribulation, especially at this part that we are looking at tonight, the judgment of the trumpets, oh, the punishments are so severe and nobody can escape it. Nobody can escape it. Like that old saying that a thousand Samuels cannot elude the reach of uh, God. Like you said in Yoruba, that Egberon Samu, Tole Samu, so in these judgments of the trumpets that we are studying tonight, we see them horrible, very frightening. And like I said, this is coming to those who miss the rapture. And we thank God for giving us this revelation. We thank God for enabling us to discuss it, to study it, to know about it now that we are still alive. It is because God does not want us to be in that judgment. He doesn't want us to face it. So please make up your mind tonight. Make up your mind to do everything that you need to do so that you will not miss the rapture. And you will not be part of the great tribulation period. I pray that the Almighty God will help all of us in Jesus' name. So we take our first uh, main Bible passage, which is from the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse 1 to 6. Revelation, chapter 8, verse 1 to 6. I'll read. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was giving much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. I hope we are following it. And there were noises. As the angel threw the incense, the bowl that was filled with fire from the earth, as it threw to the earth. Look at what uh, was said to happen. And there were noises, thundering, lightning. Seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepare themselves to sound. So after I had thrown the bowl of the fire that it, uh, was taken from the altar in heaven, fruit on the earth, we saw all those things that were happening. Cries, noises, thunderings, lightning earthquake. And then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets were now prepared to begin to blow the trumpet one after the other. As I stated before, we are now back to the continuation of the judgments. This time, with the opening of the seventh seal, as recorded in Revelation chapter 8 that we just read. Here, the apostle saw the opening of the seventh seal which was followed by a period of silence. Now, this silence emphasizes the gravity of what is about to take place. God was about to unleash a major terror on the earth. So, as the seventh sea was opened, 
there was a silent period. It was a silent period. God's wrath is about to fall. And Christ is equally preparing to return to the earth for a second coming. These two are the greatest events that will ever take place in the history of uh, mankind. So after this period of silence, we are told that seven angels appeared and received seven trumpets. At the sound of each, God's wrath will be brought down on the inhabitants of the earth. As each of those trumpets have been blown, the wrath of God will be poured on the earth, on the inhabitants of the earth. And the trumpet will also herald the second coming, the arrival of the King of Kings, the second coming of Christ towards the end, by the time we get there. Now, in closing that uh, passage, we were told that another angel was seen by the apostle collecting a golden bowl that contained incense, which are, which are prayers of the saints presented to God. And as God accepted those prayers, what has it, what the, the things that were in those prayers is for God to what? To avenge for, for them, for the same. Many of them, you know, uh, matters now. They were the prayers majorly in that instance was asking God to uh, avenge uh, uh, for avenge for them, to, to, to asking God's vengeance upon their enemies, those that are in the earth. And God really answered, indeed answered those prayers with the wrath that were being uh, uh, brought to the earth with each trumpet that was blown. And we saw that in the end that this, this very bow was also used to what? To bring fire from the altar in heaven and pour it on the earth. As we are going to see, the judgments of the trumpets tonight, you know, they will, they will come in a progressive manner, growing in intensity, growing in severity, growing in devastation. And it will lead to the return of Christ. The opening of the seventh seal is divided into seven parts, as we are going to see. Uh, and like I've been saying, it's symbolized by the blowing of the trumpets. So it is often called the trumpet judgments, just like the sub, sub uh, head says. Now, the events of the blowing of the trumpets or the judge, uh, judgment, uh, the trumpet judgments are uh, contained in verses 7 to 12 of Revelation 8, which I'm going to read now. So let me read Revelation 8, 7 to 12 to Rose. Uh, Revelation, sorry, Revelation 8, 7 to 12. So verse 7 which is about the first trumpet that was blown. Now, the, the focus of these trumpets, the things that happened, was about the grass, the trees, about the vegetation that was on the earth. So let me read it. The first angel sounded, a hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass were burned up. Verse 6, which was where the second trumpet was blown. Again, this one was to face the seas, the seas, the seas in the world. Verse 6 says, Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Let's move to verse 10, which was where the third trumpet was blown. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, 
a third of the waters became wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Now, verse 12, which is the bloom, blowing of the fourth trumpet. And the fourth yes. angel sounded. Sorry, I need to miss somebody Sorry. here. And the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck. A third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So you can see the uh, trumpet judgments now, following one another. And like I said in, in the beginning, they were, they, were, they were coming in their order of severity. So in, in this vision, just saw the events, the pouring of God's wrath with the opening uh, of the seventh seal, and then the blowing of the trumpet one after the other. Now, now as seal as one was opened, uh, uh, the, the trumpet one, if you like, as, the, as, as, that, as that was uh, blown, it sent, there was, there was a, a hail of fire and blood that came upon the earth. And this mainly affected trees. This symbolizes drought and famine brought to mankind. The fire consumes all trees, all grass, all vegetation in the earth. So there will be no food. There will be no food. So that one brings famine and drought. As trumpet two was blown, seal two was opened, he said he saw mountains burning with fire. Some mountains burning with fire. Like volcanic, you know, when you say a mountain is burning with fire, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, it's like a, voc a, you know, a volcano coming out of a, a lava, coming out of a mountains. And he said, the burning mountains were what? They were thrown into the sea. And the entire sea became like a, a pool of blood. Again, that signifies death to all the creatures in the sea. And this judgment symbol. This judgment symbolizes God's wrath falling upon the spiritual kingdoms, the false kingdoms of this world. It symbolizes a destruction to all marine kingdoms. So God is taking them out one after the other. Now when you go to the third trumpet. As the sea was open, he said he saw a great star coming down from heaven and burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers. Sea has been there. fell to it in the second trumpet. Now in this third trumpet, the sea, I mean, sorry, the, the, the rivers, all the rivers. The burning torch fell on a third of the rivers. And it says that all the Drinkable waters of the earth. You know, we don't drink from this. We have some people drink or refined or purified some of that. So that touch as they enter the rivers, all, all the drinkable rivers, all the drinkable water of the earth were. Wow. Now, this symbolizes God's doctrine. Those who pervert it, those who Then, as the fall trumpet was sounded, he said he saw the smiting of the storm. He saw the smite and
eternal kingdom of the Lord. In the new earth and new heaven, that is to all the uh, the higher mighty were dealt with. All the super powers were dealt with with the blowing of the fault. So that's what's painful to wish to die and be unable to do so. I know we understand what that is. It is very painful to wish to die and be unable to do so. So here it is written, the judgment of the fifth trumpet is so terrible that people will be seeking death and they will be unable to die. It will be the time foretold when death are more blessed than the living. When the dead, when the dead are more blessed than the living. The time was also that a time is coming that <laughs> those who are dead, they are even better off than those who are living. They will never be part of that era in Jesus' name. So the 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 judge the the fifth trumpet judgment will see what will happen. Uh, but let us first of all read where it is in the Bible. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 to 12. Let me read it to us, and then we'll talk about it. Then the fifth angel sounded. As blew the fifth trumpet. And I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he also the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came up on the earth and to that or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So we can see there, those that the locusts were permitted to harm, to hurt, to torment, only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Remember when we talk about the 144,000 that were sealed? They will be preserved, you know, from the judgments. They will be preserved from the judgments. So that's what is happening as we see at this fifth uh, 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 trumpet, the fifth judgment. Everyone that has sealed with the seal of God will not be partaker in it. Verse 5. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment. Now, these are the locals. Also. They were not given authority to kill, but they were to torment the inhabitants of the earth for five good months. Five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion. I'm sure many of us have heard about scorpion, scorpion by scorpion by. Scorpion bite is worse than snake bite. We will never experience any of such bites. He says their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. I want you to pause here. Say, hey, Father, let me not be a partaker in this judgment. Let no member of my family be a partaker in this judgment. Verse 7 now. The shape of the locusts were like horses. They are now describing how the locusts look to us. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their feet were like lions. Their feet were like lions' feet. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots and many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. 
but in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after this. So there are still two more trumpets to be blown, even after this particular trumpet. Now, what do we see here? John said he had the fifth trumpet blown. Then what did he see? He saw a star fall from heaven. Now, this star that fell from heaven is a symbol of the person of Christ who is given the ultimate authority over the bottomless pit. Now, this star, he now saw it open the, the entrance of the bottomless pit. And as he opened the entrance of the bottomless pit, he said he saw a release of smoke out of the pit and then an army of locusts who were sent to torment the inhabitants of the earth. The smoke arising from the pit shows us that the bottomless pit is indeed the lake of fire. The bottomless pit is a pit of fire. That is where hell is. It is a place reserved for the punishment of Satan, all the demons, and all the unrepentant mankind. I pray that you will not be among in Jesus' name. The army of locusts, they symbolizes demonic forces that will be working during the last days. But they will act strictly in line with the dictates of the sovereign hand of the Lord to deliver his wrath against unrepentant mankind. I pray that you never be part of that again in the name of Jesus. Let's go to part three of our study, which takes us to the judgment. You know, we have covered the five trumpet judgment. So part three says the judgment of the sixth trumpet. The judgment of the sixth trumpet. Uh, let me read what is there. River Euphrates is a significant river. The former headquarters of Satan is believed to be there. The four fallen angels in prison there are very wicked. On their release, they will mobilize 200 million, not 200,000, 200 million Oriental soldiers to wipe out one third of all living beings on the earth. It's my prayer that you will not <laughs> be there when this is happening. And he said further that in spite of this, the remainders, that is the, the, the after wiping the, the third of living beings on the earth, even those that are still living, that are not dead, human beings that are still remaining, they won't still repent. And then the judgment of God will continue upon them. Such a horrible uh, time and situation. So let me read the Revelation 9, 13 to 21, where the judgment of the sixth trumpet is written or documented by the apostle for us. Revelation 9, 13 to 21. Then the sixth angel sounded. That is, the sixth trumpet was blown. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now, the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I had the number then. I had the number of them. And thus, I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fairy red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents. Having heads, 
was coming to God at the sixth trumpet for his wrath to be released upon the inhabitants of the earth. And in answer, God dispatched four angels. These four angels were told that they've been held somewhere. Where was it? In, in the river. Euphrates. How many of us know where Euphrates is? This river Euphrates, rather. How many of us know where it is? It is in the present day Iraq. River Euphrates is in the present day Iraq. So this is. This This is, this is the truth for those who want to go and see adventures. They want to go to the bottom of that river now. There are four wicked angels that are at the bottom of that river, as written here for us by John to know. And that the time that God will use them has already been planned. Mm -hmm. It's already part of his plan. So the apostle said, as soon as they are released, they will come out of that river and gather 200 million soldiers with one mission, to kill a third of all mankind that are still alive in the earth by then. So you can imagine the number. Of, right now, they say the population of the earth is about 7 billion. And out of the population of the earth now, that is 7 billion. Only two billion are said to be Christians, nominal Christians. Christians. You can guess. Maybe they are one million, five million. Right? So you can begin to visualize the, the assuming rapture happens now. Assuming rapture happens now. It's not even all the two billion that are nominal Christians that will be raptured. It's only those that are genuine. So let's assume there are only 10 million genuine Christians. So you have about 1.99 billion of so-called nominal Christians that will not be raptured. That will not be added to another 5 billion of, uh, of unbelievers. So their destruction will just come as we are seeing now. It's my prayer that you will not be part of it in Jesus' name. Now, in this sixth judgment, unlike what we saw in the fifth trumpet, we saw locals being used, you know, to bring about God's judgment. In this sixth trumpet, the four uh, wicked angels that were released from the bottom of Raphael Fritz will gather other demons together with them. They'll gather other angels with them, fallen angels with them, and they'll be used to what? Bring about you know, destruction for these people, as we have as we have just seen. Now, one thing we should note here is that everything is under the control of God. The judgments of the trumpets is under the control of God. We'll be using all the forces. <laughs> to carry out his way as he has proposed for the time. Uh, the, the battle itself, the battle itself was, I mean, had actually been won on the cross at the time Christ resurrected. So it's just the finishing part of it. The finishing part of it is what we call in this great tribulation period, which is to herald the second coming of Christ, you know, to the earth, for the kingdom of God to be established. So that's how it will go until we get to the seventh trumpet. We are not going to cover that tonight. It's for our next study. I just want us to pray a prayer tonight. Having seen the devastating, horrific, you know, terror and punishment that will be released on the inhabitants of the earth, please make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will give whatever it takes 
so that you will not be left behind. If Jesus were to return tonight, how many of us are sure that will make rapture? That is how serious it is. If Jesus were to come now, even as you are doing Bible study now, how many of us are sure that we are going to be rapturable? That is the issue. We are being shown through this revelation now, the things that will happen after rapture. Now we have got into the very, very horrific parts. You are seeing what the apostle wrote, what the lamb, what Jesus asked him to write down. It's what we are just reading now. Tonight we are studying the seven trumpet judgments. We are, we are now knowing about the, 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 the horror, the punishment, the severity, the devastation that is going to visit the earth, the destruction. Okay? A life falling into the waters, all the water God is in, and then killing a lot of people. Angels coming out, I mean, uh, demons as it were, coming out, multiplying themselves, locals coming out, and stinging people to death. To me, these are enough food for thought for us. Having been told, give your life to Jesus, give your life to Jesus, and you are saying, say, hey, I want to enjoy my life, I want to enjoy my life. Ah, <laughs> if you choose, I want to enjoy my life and rapture comes, and you are left behind. This is what is going to happen. This is what you are going to face. So I want to appeal to all of us. Now that we know, now that it's been revealed to us when rapture takes place, won't you now begin to really uh, address your salvation? Won't you begin now to look list all the wrongs I'm doing and start working to knock them off as quickly as well, because nobody knows the time, the hour that the Son of Man will come back. You know yourself very well. Leave them down. Yeah. Leave them down. All the vices that are in your hand, all the things you think about, all the things you say, with your, all the things that you do, leave them down and begin to work at what? Eliminating them as quickly as you can so that the Lord will not meet it in your hand. Anybody that the Lord still meets one thing or the other in his hand, he cannot take with him by rapture. So please do this. Help your fellow brother. Help your fellow sister. Help your husband. Help your wife. Help your children to be taking these issues seriously. So that will not be left behind. I want us to pray prayer. Finally, I want you to pray to God now. I want you to talk to God and say, Father, please help me. Our members of my family to remain on your side. Help my loved ones to be on your side till you return. Be on your side means always obedient, always doing what he asks us to do. I pray that the Lord Almighty will help all of us. That if the Lord should return, may he find us all rapturable and members of our family. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I will pause there and uh, we allow time for questions and further contributions. Case may be for on the floor. God bless you all.
Um, good evening, sir. Good evening. Welcome back. My first time online. <laughs> Let's clap for you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um hearing that we should all list out the things that we do, things that we think um draws us back. In as much as you know, that brings to mind, I mean, it brings this to these things to our consciousness. But it also has a way of um getting into in this situation how so for instance i i write out the things that i'm doing that, that i think i need to stop and then um you know my husband sees it and then, you know, is he begins to judge me. Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? So for every one of us, how are we supposed to deal? Mm. So who can help us, yeah? Can help us. As a very practical, uh, question, just as my advice, and somebody sees it, maybe your spouse or somebody else. And I have a guy search in the closer images, just to be sure that. We are able to deal with all our issues, issues as in things that are that are that are not right. Or let me just put it plain: to deal with issues of sins in our lives, the wrong things we are doing. Because if if the Lord returns and meet any of those sins in our hands, we will not be rapturable. So what I suggested was that for us not to overlook anything, try to write. somewhere for as well to eliminate them as fast as possible because you don't know the time the law will return. So the question came that ah if I go and write social things down and somebody has sees it to me handle it. So can I post our time is good. I I hope I capture your question very well. Well so can I help us in um Thank you, Sister Moka, for that question. I think um, we've been... when Daddy said says really taking a piece of paper and, and writing it down and then keeping it in the real sense of the word. Um, and it depends on where you find yourself. Um, when we take stock of the things that we need to set right, we don't necessarily need to put it in a place where we'll be exposed. So if you know that even if somebody sees it and then the person will judge you and probably hold on to it forever. I think after taking stock, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit to really write down the things. So maybe I thought I was only struggling with 10 things. And by the time the Holy Spirit takes me to a session, I'm able to write 35 things. I think when I'm done with that, what I would personally do is to shred that piece of paper. There is that consciousness that I already know what it is. I will probably, if I need to write it down so that I'm, I'm intentional about uh, striking every item off, off that list, I'll probably put it in a, um, a doc, um, an electronic form and then put a password to it. And you know, set out the time that I want to be reviewing it. Because it's similar to if you're writing your will, if you're doing anything that is highly confidential, and for whatever reasons, whatever it is you are do doing there for your eyes alone, is the same way you probably process this. 
And again, too, I struggle because, you know, some you said, oh, uh, even if parents see it, I, I struggle with why people will judge other people, especially when the person explains that, look, I'm working through this process in order to make myself right for when God is going to come. So whoever sees it, Probably, and, and again, to, so, sorry, there's a final thing I wanted to say, which is about the risk of writing things down and not keeping properly. It might not even be somebody close enough to you. So maybe a, a driver, um, a colleague sees it as well. So whenever we're doing such a thing, we should remember to keep it carefully or we shred it. And I, every time we need to work on it, we create a new set. And then we'll start from where we're at. So the intention is probably by the next three months when I go to review it, I've moved from 35 to 30. Then the next time I want to take another list, maybe I'm down to 18 and all of that. So it, it's important that people are conscious. Whatever you write, you need to keep them so that they do not fall into the wrong hands. And it's a general rule regarding anything in life. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good evening. What's that? Yes. Um, this uh, this question it's it, it's very kind of sensitive. Um, I think we are living in a world now where privacy has become uh, very valuable to everybody. However, the Bible says that uh, two shall become one when you are married. So where do we draw the line when you say? Uh, because your spouse is going to judge you, he must not uh, he or she must not be aware of uh, your your uh, whatever you are you are you know trying to make right with. Because there is also a place for having an accountability partner. So if you if for example, let's say it's a case of adultery, for example, and then you feel that by uh, going to God and uh, asking God to help you would just be enough. I, don't, I think if you don't actually, you know, make right with your spouse on that particular matter, there is a high chance of going back to doing that. I've, I've actually seen cases where people um, Christian have actually gone that night and uh, they keep praying and praying. But because they keep it away from their husband, because it's going to is going to judge them, they will never like open up on that uh, uh, weakness. They keep going back to it, even though God always forgives. We know that. But if you don't own up, take responsibility for what you have done, if you are afraid of being judged, most likely you keep going back to it. That's that's my top on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, sir, for the wonderful teaching of today. Uh, this teaching just remind me of a series I'm listening to. Uh, in the last uh, two, three months, thereabouts, uh, the Holy Spirit has helped me to lay my hands on some CDs in their in series to test uh, your Christian life. In fact, each time I listen to that series, I, I repent again. If I listen to it now, I repent. If I listen to it in the next 30 minutes, something new again will jump at me. And I repent again because uh, we must all get to a point where you must be sure of this race. Because uh, you might think everybody in church is running the race of heaven. People have different races they are running. So we should not be deceived by, oh, we are all in the same church. We are going some the same place. No, no, no. We have some people uh, who is not going where you are going. That is that. Now, to respond to what our brother just said, and uh, to kick start from the question the sister asked too, I think for me, uh, is issue of trust. And I'm choosing my word carefully. Uh, the word trust is a very heavy word. I can love you as my husband or as my wife, but I can still have some doubts about certain trust in you. That doesn't mean I don't love you. So, for example, 
if in my office, if in my office, I have this uh, lady that I'm hiring or that is hiring me, and, and I get home and I tell my wife that, ah, my wife, let us pray, or there's a lady in the office that I'm hiring or she's hiring me. And if I have any issue with my wife, and my wife made reference to me that, ah, she be there's a girl in your office. It has broken trust. I still love her. I still care for her. But trust has been broken. So if I have some personal stuff I'm struggling with, and I write it down, of course, I might want to keep it because of some level of trust. Or I have a past for example, that I go to share some personal information with. And on Sunday, and he or she is preaching, and he made mention of what I discussed in privacy. There are broken trust. I will not go and discuss anything like that again with such pastor. So that's the issue with spouse. Uh, I agree with you, brother, that everything your wife knows, everything you know, two of you must know because Two has become one. But sometimes, too, what informs the reason why your spouse acts in certain way or you act in certain way is a function of trust. Now, that does not mean you distrust her or she distrusts you. That is not a subject matter. But there might be some one or two statements in passing, in time past, that you weigh on the option of trust and you say, there might be some things I might not tell my spouse or my spouse will not tell me, not because he or she does not trust me or believe in me, but because of this or because it's personal. I, I don't want to share it. So those are just my own opinion. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any comments? Because I have something to say about that. Praise God. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I I don't really know. Uh, for me, I I think uh, when it comes to I'm not married yet, but uh, when so you're not qualified. Uh, I'm not qualified. <laughs> uh, but from my experience, I've I grew up in a broken home for 33 years, and I've been asking God questions. Uh, from the answers I have gotten, when it comes to issue of trust, uh, marriage partners should know that they are managers of each other's emotions. And uh, when it comes to an issue of another opposite says that somebody has, has Maybe it's iron or it has an affidavit that you can and truly because only the power of a woman can destroy the power to yourself and try to manage it on your own. It's better that your spouse judge you, and after judging you, you and her fight that battle and defeat it together, or the other way around. But when it comes to keeping it and fighting it single-handedly, it's often dangerous, because when you do that, you might end up ruining more things. That's my own opinion over that issue. And another thing, when it comes to writing things down and keeping it, I would say that you get it right with God first. Once you have gotten it right with God, then every other thing will fall in place. The person that, that has the character of judgment is also somebody that has the same seed. Look at um, the Bible. You see Solomon, uh, you see the, the, the three okay. kings in I the Bible. I want to also say that we should just be brief because others want to also talk. 
Let's just be quick to okay, okay. our points, please. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll sing Saul, David, and, and the Absalom. These are three kings. When someone is judging another person, is a sign. I have to be on. So, brother Chidi. Please go. Brother Chidi. Yes, sir. 10 more seconds. I have three hands already. I've finished. And those hands have, have for one minute to make your contribution. All right. I'm not stopping you. Just run off. Ten seconds. Okay. okay. So three what hands. I'm trying oh. to say. Okay. I think it's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that, Chidi. Um. I wanted to mention when um, Brother Tom Newells talked about um, the spouse being necessarily the accountability party. And um, for me, it's even regarding anything. So a spouse, um, a parent, a sibling, does not necessarily need to be an accountability party that affects our spouses. We need to put it on the table so that they know. But I think the question that we started with was around God working with us on the things we're struggling with. So for example, let's say the Holy Spirit points out to me that, oh, I tell more lies than the truth. The truth of the matter is our spouses will know we tell lies. Our spouses, we know we are deceitful, we are cheats. Or all ready. So when they, when they start truly dealing with you and the Holy Spirit has pointed out some things that I already know, maybe I've discussed them or not with you. So the, the, bit, the bit about judging people is what we should all commit not to. When we know that we're on a journey with God, then we shouldn't judge one another. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for making it brief. Who is ringing bell? Okay, mommy. One minute. <laughs> okay, let me meet the person. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that we should close. Okay, we are like we will close now. Mommy, one minute. <laughs> they rang bell. Closing time. <laughs> ah, I'm not hearing mommy. Where is she? You are muted in case you have been speaking. You are muted. Okay, yes. I'm, I, I'm muted. Yes, I, I've omit myself mm -hmm. now. Okay. <laughs> I said for some time I've been praying to God to show me the areas I need to make an amends. And uh, for some time, God has been showing me in my dream and all that. And yesterday, it wasn't even in the dream. I was just praying in the morning, my quiet time. And then Holy Spirit just showed me. And I said, I thank God that the one he showed me, I've already, I've already made amend and I've prayed for mercy and forgot to help me not to do it again. And in that, in that point, there's something to tell me about your shop. I said, what about my shop? He said, one of my shop, the the, 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 the people we are using there, the lie that they buy, because I was sharing prepare meter with somebody. And this is you call more one time. And I told them, ah, it's again my, 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 my belief that I, I cannot be cheating. And uh, if, if I rob a nepa, I'm a robber. I said, I don't like it. And I said, if that is the case, I, I need my own meter. Because they said they have to be the one to get meter for me. So yesterday, as I was praying, Holy Spirit just told me that one of your shop, if if rapture should come now, because of what is happening there, because they are cheating Nepa, they should see a text that I will not make every ah, it troubled my mind. I was praying, and the people I'm dealing with, they are opposite religion. So I was just praying that God, please do something. So the glory of God, when I got to my shop today,
Never people they came and they cut us. Never has come, they've cut us. I, I said, I, I, inside, I said, glory be to God. So, and they, they find, if I went to what I about money, I said, divide it into two, I will pay my own. I said, in fact, the, the fan is even small compared to even the energy tips. I said, ah, thank God, you know, I've been telling you that it's against my, my belief. So, I, I thank God he came out today and uh, how, in fact, I've been, I've been overjoyed for this. So, yeah, this is part of what will not make us to make ever. Praise the Lord. That just is my testimony. Yeah. Okay. So I can't wait to just share uh, it. Uh, <laughs> one minute. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to take mine from another, from another angle. Um, so what if your spouse knows or your colleague or your driver knows? It's a race you are running. Salvation is personal. So if the whole world knows that maybe you are fighting um, pornography, so be it. Fight your own fight and make it to heaven. If they laugh at you, well, when I'm going, when, when I want to do this kind of things, I usually just ask for strength. If the whole world knows, Father Lord, give me strength to to see through, to overcome the the shame, to overcome the disgrace, but keep me strong going in this path, whether they know or not, is their business. Fight your own fight. Thank you, ma. Uh, I'll, I'll keep my fitness because of our time. But I think one thread that runs through is the need for genuineness in our repentance. When we are genuine, that we want to stop this thing we are doing and we pray, the Holy Spirit will help us, irrespective of who knows or do not know about it. The Almighty God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the time we had tonight to learn again at your feet. We pray that all the wisdom, the understanding we have received tonight, will put them to use in our lives. And you help us to run our race successfully. That if you are to come on any time now, Baba, we pray that we'll be in a position, in condition, that we'll be able to be raptured with you. Lord, yes. if once we drop our offering, I will give our offering unto you tonight. Please bless it. Sanctify yes. it, Lord. And return it back to us in more than a hundredfold. Thank you for answer prayers. Be thou glorified, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, one or two announcements. Tomorrow morning in church, we have our deliverance hour by 7.30 in the morning. And this Thursday, instead of faith clinic, we are having Holy Communion. We join the, the Redemption Camp Holy Communion service. And on Friday, of course, is the July Holy Good service. As we attend all these services, God Almighty will meet us in special ways in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good night to everyone. And our first time of tonight. We thank God for your life. We pray you keep it up. Keep it up and the uh, others. Good night, everyone. 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 Uh,